Now, boys and girls, it's Pastor Ed here. Uh, a few weeks back, maybe a couple of months even, uh, in my children's message, I showed you my two dogs. I've got two dogs, one uh, Daisy, she's a little bit older. She's also larger. Uh, she's a German Shepherd uh, uh, Golden Retriever mix. She's 16 years old. And then we have little Jasmine. Well, Jasmine gets all excited whenever I come home. I mean, even if I've just been gone for a half an hour or something, but certainly at the end of the day, when I come in the front door, she is all excited. She comes running up and then she wants to play and she wants to wrestle. Well, we actually recorded it. This is what it looks like. This happened earlier today uh, when I came home and how Jasmine reacted. Where's my Jazzy? Where's my Jazzy? Jazzy, where's he? Where's Jasmine? Come on, let's. Well, I'm back, boys and girls. You saw me um, getting greeted by Jasmine. She's so excited, and then she wants to wrestle, and I get down with her, and we start wrestling. And, and, and two things to think about. Um, one, she's so much smaller. So if we were really wrestling for real and not just playing, we were just playing around, um, she couldn't out-wrestle me or beat me or whatever. I'm so much larger and stronger than she is. But you may have noticed one thing, that she doesn't give up. I could, we could have kept filming, recording, and she would have kept going and going and going and going. She just doesn't give up. Well, that kind of reminds me of our Bible story for today. It's in the book of Genesis, and there's a fellow by the name of Jacob. And Jacob wasn't such a nice guy. In fact, the name Jacob means to replace, kind of take the place of, and that's sort of what he did. He had a twin brother, Esau, who was a little bit, well, minutes, seconds older than he was. They were twins, born at the same time. But Esau was born first, so by right, he was the oldest son. That meant that he would get uh, the birthright as the oldest son. He also would get the blessing. So God had started to bless his people through Abraham and Abraham's son, Isaac. Well, it was Isaac was the father of Esau and Jacob. Well, make a long story short, Jacob stole Esau's birthright. Well, he swindled him out of it. He also swindled him out of the blessing, and then he skedaddled out of town because Esau was really mad at him. And so Jacob wasn't such a nice guy. And many, many years later, he's coming back, and he's going to finally come face to face with his brother Esau. And he doesn't know what Esau's going to do. But one night after he sent his, his family and his, all his animals across the river, Jabbok, uh, he stayed there by himself. And there he had a wrestling match with a mysterious person. And they wrestled all night long. And it turns out he realized that he was really kind of wrestling with God. Um, and the same thing that was true for me and Jasmine was true of, of Jacob uh, and God. Jacob, there's no way that Jacob could beat God in a wrestling match. Um, but Jacob just wouldn't give up. He wouldn't let go. He kept, kept wrestling. Um, and so in the morning, God basically said, you know, you're going to be a different person. And actually, Jacob did. This, this whole experience changed Jacob's life completely around. Um, but I'm going to call you, not Jacob, I'm going to give you a new name, says God. Your name is going to be Israel. And the, Isra the name Israel means he who wrestles with God. And from that point on, Jacob, now known as Israel, was a completely new person, a completely different person. He made up with his brother Esau, but more importantly, the God's promises, God's promises they made to Abraham and then to Isaac now came through Jacob, or now known as Israel. And ultimately, Israel had 12 sons, and it was those 12 sons, their descendants, became the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So Jacob slash Israel uh, was a very important figure in the Old Testament. And it's an example of how God can change our lives. We can wrestle with God, but God, God kind of knows what's best for us. 
And Jacob was finally able to see that. He was transformed into this, got a new name even, Israel. Uh, and it's through Israel and specifically his 12 sons and all their descendants that the whole nation of Israel came that fulfilled the promise and the prophecy that was made uh, to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham. And so in our lives, there might be times when we're not sure what we should do, or maybe we kind of go off track and, and, and we're confronted with God and what God wants for our lives, and we kind of wrestle with God. And, but God always knows best what's, what we need to do and, and who we should be, how we should act. And so we can remember that story of Jacob who became Israel, that God knows what's best for us and God can transform our lives and God can kind of take the things that aren't so good about us and, and, and make us into a new person. And that's really the, the story of the Bible and certainly the story when we get to Jesus in the New Testament who changes our lives forever. Let's pray. Oh God, sometimes we, we wrestle with you. We want to do things our way instead of the way that you would want us to be and to live. You know what's best for us. And so we pray that we would, in our wrestling with you and our struggling, we would finally come to see that you do know, do know what's best and that you would lead us in the best and in the, in, in the right direction, especially through your son Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, you have a great week, boys and girls. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.